Hello folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee here with your daily devotional. Looking again at uh, Paul Tripp's book, New Morning Mercies, uh, gospel devotional and a daily reader. Paul begins uh, this day with a, a comment on real faith. He says, real faith never calls you to swindle yourself into thinking that things are better than they are. Biblical faith is shockingly honest and hopeful. And friends, that's one of the reasons why I believe the Christian faith and the gospel to be true. It's real. It's honest. Um, never asks you to stuff your feelings or emotions. As a matter of fact, right in the center of our Bibles, we have the book of Psalms, which express every single human emotion uh, that we ever experience ourselves, even in these modern times. These 150 ancient songs um, that the describe all kinds of great joy, the heights of joy, and as well the just the pits of sorrow and, and, and frustration, uh, impatience, uh, everything. So here he says, uh, Paul Tripp says, biblical faith is not about wearing a saccharine smile while living in a constant state of religious denial. It's not about covering the stark and dark realities of a fallen world with overused pseudo-biblical cliches. Man, that's great. I'm, uh, I'm really glad for that. I suppose you are as well. Uh, it's not about praying in King James English because somehow that makes you feel more spiritual. It's not about priding yourself on your ability to keep God's rules or thinking you're more sanctified because you're on pace to read through the whole Bible again this year. can't tell you how many times my one-year Bible bookmark and my one-year Bible is, is pages behind where it ought to be. Yeah. It's not about cleaning yourself up on Sunday so your public persona hides the real details of your private spiritual life. It's not about keeping score of how many years you've gone through without missing a worship service. It's not about polishing your righteousness so you look better to you and to others. It's not about saying you're okay when you give daily empirical evidence that you are anything but okay. If you are doing, saying, or thinking religious things that are meant to protect you from reality, you are not living biblical Christianity. You may feel better, but your heart has not been quieted by biblical faith. Mm. The faith of the Bible will never call you to deny reality in any way. Now that is just, that's freedom right there, folks. I love that. The faith of the Bible is so in awe of the grandeur and glory of God that it is able to look at the darkest of realities in life and not be afraid. Remember the most often repeated command in Scripture. Do not fear. And Jesus even says occasionally, <clears throat> don't be afraid, little ones. Uh, I love the tenderness of our Savior um, Paul Tripp goes on to say, Abraham did not need to deny reality in order to leave his home without knowing for sure where God was taking him. Noah did not need to deny reality in order to spend 120 years building that ark. The children of Israel did not need to deny reality in order to walk around Jericho for seven days. David did not need to deny reality in order to face Goliath in battle. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not need to deny reality in order to step into that white hot furnace. Peter did not need to deny reality in order to stand before the Sanhedrin and refuse to quit preaching the gospel. Mm. <clears throat> and before that, he didn't need to, to deny reality to receive a recommissioning from Jesus after he had denied Jesus three times. He didn't have to so lock in on his own guilt, having blown it and denied Christ three times. And then when Jesus came along and said, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, and Jesus essentially recommissioned Peter, he didn't have to deny reality. As a matter of fact, you know, I, for one, find Peter a comforting character to read about. You see, it wasn't the naivete of faith that propelled these people. No, it was the clarity of faith that caused them to do what they did. 
Get this now. It is only when you look at this dark world through the lens of the existence, power, authority, wisdom, faithfulness, love, and grace of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that you see reality with clarity. I'm going to read that sentence again because it's so rich. It's got a nice long list there. It's only when you look at this dark world through the lens of the existence, power, authority, wisdom, faithfulness, love, and grace of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that you see reality with clarity. That's brilliant. You cannot ever assess and understand what you are facing if you omit the fact of facts, the existence of God, the reality of God. And yet we spend so much of our time trying to usurp God, trying to switch places with God, trying to blur the line between the creator and the creation. We're all on the creation side. God is the only one on the creator side. And so we receive from him the gift of life itself, the gift of his grace, his forgiveness, his joy. We receive all of that from him. We receive the peace of knowing that we belong not to ourselves, but we belong to him. This is so beautiful. You cannot ever assess and understand what you are facing if you omit the fact of facts, the existence of God. In fact, that's how the writer of Hebrews defines faith. Quote, and without faith, it is impossible to please him for the meaning God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. I love it that it didn't say that he rewards those who, and then fill in the blank with one of the rules that we sometimes think we have to follow. He rewards those who seek him. Let's seek him today. Let's set our sails toward him today. This is so beautiful. Are you lacking faith? Then Paul Tripp says, run to the one who freely gives it as his gift of grace to you. So even the faith that we need to believe in God's existence, God's power, God's authority, God's wisdom, um, his faithfulness, his love, and his grace. Even the faith to believe those things, even that faith itself is a gift from God. Hmm. I love the scriptures for that. It just starts to break through the fog and the darkness for me. I hope it does for you as well. New Morning Mercies by Paul Tripp. Great daily reader. Let me pray for us as we get this day going. Thank you, God. Uh, for the gift of faith that you've granted to us to believe in you, to trust in you, to hope in you. Give us now, I pray, a clearer vision of your truth, a greater faith in your power, and a more confident assurance of your love toward us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.